presentation on the odds of a crisis PR event occurring for you or your organization. I'm David Oates. I'm the founder of Public Relations Security Service. We are a crisis PR organization designed to help individuals and organizations that are being besieged in the press or online reviews, social media and the like, or better yet, if they've got something percolating, hopefully either prevent the crisis PR activity from occurring or get them through it as quick as possible. We also have training and accreditation for programs to help prepare organizations as part of their overall disaster recovery strategy. I'm going to go through in about the next 30 minutes some overviews as to first, what is a crisis? What is it that organizations are really going to look at in terms of what would be identified as a crisis PR situation? We'll go into what we feel are the odds of occurring based on empirical data that we found and then a quick some things about you never want to do in a crisis PR situations and things that you should do in any type of event. A crisis PR act is one that at its minimum disrupts normal operations. You just can't get anything done because you're answering the mail of people who are not sure about you anymore. They're questioning your brand and its ability to resonate with them. This could result from a whole wide array of instances, but it's something in which is going to be an all hands on deck. You've got to answer the mail, whether that mail is reporters, emails, inbound inquiries, social media reviews and the like. In other words, things that are going to take you from actually fulfilling your product and service, getting revenue in the door and ultimately profitability. Crisis also, in addition to damaging the, van, the brand, just draws confusion. People now are question some of your abilities or some of the things that you espouse, and that's going to slow down your revenue cycle. It's going to at least give people pause and the potential to look elsewhere for a competing offer. The crisis PR at its, whole, at its core, too, is also one that gives the appearance that you are now conflicted with the values that you express, that you profess. And that also will slow down, not only from a customer standpoint, but also from people who help you fulfill your product and service. So these are strategic partners, shareholders, other, stake, other stakeholders who at its core are invested in your success. And they're often difficult to recover. The average crisis PR event, average crisis PR event, is something to the tune of a half a million dollars to any size organizations. And obviously, depending on the size of the group, that will just shoot up. If you're a publicly traded company, you could lose that in your market cap within the first moments, uh, let alone certainly what happens from a sales and productivity and profitability in the long term. So it is something that you need to prepare for in advance. Now, what are the odds of this occurring? There's probably three that every organization is susceptible to at its, at its base. This is for services organizations as well as manufacturing organizations and product organizations. The more comprehensive you are, the more global you are, the more events have a likelihood of occurring and becoming a crisis. But even if you're a five-person shop, you have risk of dealing with one of these three issues just in alone, the last figures we have. There's nearly 85 just for the federal government. We're not talking in any state or local municipalities. This is just federal level, it, nearly 85,000 charges with, against organizations for committing HR violations, and ultimately victims who filed $100 million for, for, by organizations for their people uh, committed against a lot of organizations. That alone should give pause for people to start to look at how they would respond should a claim. Uh, occur because what you find also is once a claim is made, the scuttlebutt, as it's called, the rumor mill within the organization tends to spread pretty well. 
let alone what happens if your partners see it, customers hear about it, media catch onto it, it can cascade from there. But just to get your employees to not question whether you're a good company to work for based on somebody else's claim against the organization for an HR violation, that alone should give you pause to start to put together contingency plans should, should you need to use it. That isn't enough. Cyber infractions are, are ones that nearly every company of any size is going to face. Uh, we saw just in a year between 2016 and 2017, the amount of cyber attacks doubled. 83% of those were ransomware. So in other words, nefarious organizations who shut down the networks of an organization and, ex and said they weren't going to free it up, paid a certain amount of money, sometimes in Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. But in any case, the global cost of those were to the tune of 5.3 billion with a B. And no organization is immune to this threat because the way in which the cyber thieves and cyber hacker organizations work right now, they're very organized, they're sophisticated, and they spread their infiltration capabilities far and wide. They don't know whether you're a 10 person organization or a 100,000 person organization. They know you from an IP address. So it's very easy for them just to spread far and wide. And the next thing you know, you're dealing with the matter at hand. And if those two aren't enough, even for privately held companies, the third most contested issue that they will face that can result in a crisis PR are shareholder disputes. I dealt with one at the end of last year that was a small 50 person services shop with three partners, two partners ousted the third. And the next thing you know, there's two lawsuits countering each other, a temporary restraining order, and a social media melee that was visible, caustic, and ultimately unproductive. And that spreads to concern that customers are going to have, of theirs had, but also referral partners, people who are driving in new business. They were concerned about putting the brakes on making referrals to this organization until the dust settled. They weren't sure if they could trust that this organization was going to carry forward and what the end result was going to be of the shareholder disputes. We're seeing, we saw just in the first half of last year, which is the latest step, stats that I found, that there were 204 filings and that was on pace to match 2008, which had, was an all-time record from that. And the dollar loss in productivity as well as hard dollar cash and revenue potential and profitability to those organizations was nearly $650 billion. Now, take think about that. Shareholder disputes were nearly 100 times, actually more than 100 times than the cyber breaches, which everybody knows is a major threat. So if you aren't sure whether you're at risk, I would submit to you, just on the odds alone, you are going to find that these three are really almost a foregone conclusion that at some point in your company's lifetime, you will deal with one or more of these matters. And it's always good to try to keep, be prepared to respond to something like that before you have to. Because if the narrative is defined by somebody else who sets the stage as to what happened and why and how they were wrong, you will find it very costly to try to respond, to try to get your story heard over that noise. And it will usually take you a day or two before you can do that at best case scenario if you don't plan ahead of time. Now you've let this story linger for a couple of days and everybody's going to assume that that side is the truth and whatever you have is to try to dissuade them. So it is important to do a crisis PR plan beforehand. This also ties into the second question is you absolutely can prepare. People ask me, well, I don't know the circumstances. I don't know out of all of my employees, which one might file a claim. I don't know what type of attack I'm going to be seeing if I'm in cyber, where it is, or how much damage I'm going to see. I certainly am getting along well with my partner now, but who knows well in another year or two. How do I train for all this? You can email messages that talk about how your organization would be 
Trump and how you are going to resolve this matter in the quickest. We can get into details later, but in a framework, an action point, quick if you if you see something something occurring is absolutely I'm not so sure you want to use your rig your social media accounts or a company LinkedIn page pages and Instagram or the like But I think that it is important to have crisis through other accounts. You can refer on occasion in your normal accounts to those to those that you put in place right away. The same thing that you typically do with any sort of disaster recovery plan. So if you disaster recovery plan, workplace audit, those kind of things, the crisis PR, how you partners, shareholders, and certainly to the general public through any third party is vital. Because if, if you have, have all, all of these other operations in place and you're starting to work with that, but no one knows about it, and knows that they're ready. To speak. But don't be trained up by how to respond. Conference calls with investors and the like. Be in to talk to how you would respond to a situation, how you would articulate your key messages okay, as to essentially indict people in based on the limited information that they have. That somebody who's been trained in that, that takes somebody who is comfortable or so they're not caught flat footed. Oftentimes, we see in the crisis situation, the CEO, the marketing director, the, C, the CFO, or the like, is responding in such a way that is um, caustic. And that only just reads validation for the other side and not being able to be ready for those can make matters worse. On a regular basis, probably no less than twice yearly, but I would submit quarterly is even better scenarios that are around there. The scenarios are quite as important in their details as they are in the social media account. Who's answering emails, who's monitoring phone calls, to partner or talking to investors and the like. And get ready for those in advance. So you can have those that what I'll call, call prompt to unannounced drills or generating that muscle memory so no one's caught. Uh, surprise. Be certainly up Data events and re 
you the type of general scenarios you have to see if a business unit or maybe your into another direction, maybe add it in another Who, what, where, where, when, why, your key messages, and your plan addresses all, all talk to your employees who are in the front lines of dealing with contact with the people who are going to either make or break your company in terms of revenue profitability. Then equally as important as your customers. And then on a secondary level, but ones you want to respond to if you can in the same amount of time as your extended investment. Media is the last one you have to concern yourself with. Again, you want to try to respond to all of these audiences right away. But if you have to, if you have to prioritize one just because of time constraints, employees and customers are first, vendors and partners are second, investors are are also a second, and then your distant third is media. If you have to go that way, here's things you don't want to do. Though. Don't want to wait for more information before you disseminate something. Now, it doesn't mean you need to make stuff up. Or you certainly don't want to speculate or draw conclusions without the proper information. But don't wait on talking about the circumstances until you know more. Because what you're doing is you're delaying your response, you're delaying your ability to set the narrative, and you're letting somebody else do so. So get things out right away. If it's a major enough case, within an hour of knowing about it, or certainly within the same day. And even if there's blame to be had, somebody's making a false accusation on HR, somebody else uh, created a hole within your network that was allowing a cyber attack to occur, somebody else outside of your internal team created the shareholder disputes, don't place blame, don't point fingers, at least right away, even if it's warranted, because you need to take the high road. You rarely are in a position where you will be able to successfully deflect the attention away from the organization to somebody else. If it's found out to be that somebody else is responsible for that, that will come in due time and you're in good shape. But don't try to place the blame. It just is not good from an optical standpoint. Certainly don't forget an audience. Those five audiences that I mentioned, again, in the order priority of employee and customers first is important. And don't field inquiries ad hoc. Have a system in place by which people can field information either directly to a spokesperson or through the proper channels and be ready to respond to those. But if you have one or off people just sort of doing it in casual conversation, you find it's very tough to sort of control the message. And this is why in a crisis PR situation, everybody's got to be focused on this. The more you're focused on it, the more able to answer the question, the quicker you'll get back to normal operations. Well, other things, as I talked about, is you really, really want to make sure that you're showing empathy in action. So the failure to do either of those gives the audience, whether it's employees, customers, partners, investors, or media, the perception that you don't care, 
and you're not doing anything about it. And that makes a crisis PR situation always worse. In that kind of situation, emotions are running high. People want to feel that they're being heard and that there's action to be taken to right what they perceive to be a wrong. Even if there's questions about whether you need to right a wrong or whether this wrong is necessarily unfounded, you need to show that you want to take action to repair this rift that now is available, even if it's just to lend a hand, lend a lend an open ear and try to at least present the full information and the full account. But not showing empathy in action will only get people's defenses more up. You'll get into a shouting match and you won't win. And the last thing you never want to do is to fail to prepare for contingency. Crisis PR is a manageable event if you're prepared, much in the same way you are with IT, other fulfillment operations, dealing with uh, dealing with financial uh, management issues. Everybody trains for their skill set. This is just another element, and that can be vitally important if only to preserve your ability to maintain revenue figures at your current levels, if not also maintain your growth projections, and as important, your profitability. Your brand ultimately will be made or broken by the ability to be perceived as fulfilling on your intended purpose. Crisis PR events at its core give people pause to be not sure whether you can do that. And your ability to assuage them that the incident is either out of context or a one-off misstep, which everybody has, and that you're taking action, you'll have a better opportunity then to continue on uh, your normal path of operations, but only if you prepare. I really appreciate your time to have this, to certainly listen to this overview. I would not have given my LinkedIn and my Twitter account along with my direct line if I didn't want you to respond. I welcome your feedback on this. Feel free to pass it along to colleagues and friends. You can look up at our website, publicrelationssecurity.com. I'm David Oates. Thanks so much for watching. You'll see more of these and other episodes on our YouTube channel, Public Relations Securities. I look forward to your feedback. Thanks so much for your time.